know if it's true, but let's say it is. I'm reminded of a story of a Spanish-speaking bandit. He had robbed the bank, and he was fleeing some sheriff deputies, and uh, the sheriff and his deputy, and they chased him down, and they caught, caught up with him. And uh, when they captured him, the sheriff, who couldn't speak Spanish, asked them where the money was hidden. Couldn't find the money. To which the suspect said, no se nada. That's what he said. He said, no se nada. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And, and so the sheriff says to his deputy, who did speak Spanish, tell him, if he doesn't tell him where this money is, I'm going to blow his brains out right here and now. And so he, he told him this, and in response, uh, he, uh, the bandit says, Ya me acuerdo. Tienen que caminar tres cuartos hasta el gran árbol. Allí está el dinero. Dan, what I said? What's that? Under the tree. Go three blocks and it's under the tree. To which the sheriff leaned forward and said, Well, what did he say? And the deputy said, he says he wants to die with dignity. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we've come a long way in translation in, in our court system. Uh, when I took over the commission, I heard stories about how we found translators. And I remember when I was an intern in, in trial court, I remember hearing stories about how you got translators. We all know how it happened. I actually saw it happen. Who in the courthouse speaks? Korean, Mandarin, go get them. See if they're available. Well, he's off at lunch. He'll be back in a little bit. And that's generally how we provided translation services. We struggled when I first took on uh, as chair of, of the commission, formalizing the translation process, the interpreter process, so that we, ha we had people who were certified and registered. And then we had judges who knew to look for they certified and, and, and registered interpreters. But yet there was a black market of interpreters that, that thrived and, and probably still continue to thrive. And then 2010 hit. In 2010, we got a letter from the United States Department of Justice. And y'all may have been around during that time, some of you. And it was really a, a shot across the bow. And th that letter basically demanded of all court systems throughout the country to do a better job of, of providing interpretive services. It demanded everybody to, to just do better. And the tone of turn and tenor of this letter was, look, we, we know it's hard to provide interpreter services for all these various languages all throughout the state, when you need it, where you need it, at a qualified level. We know that. But you need to do better. And you need to do a lot better. And they said, you know, if these difficulties that you that we know that are out there really prohibit you from doing it effectively, let us know. But the bar is going to be high and you need to do better. And by the way, you need to do it at no charge. You can't charge the criminal defendants where I knew that. But what they were real clear is you, you couldn't charge the folks, plaintiffs or defendants, in a civil case. And so that was a wake-up call. Uh, it was a wake-up call uh, to all of us. And we in Georgia, we, we wrestled with all those things that the DOJ uh, had identified as, as, as challenges. But they also said in the letter, and, and we're going to hold the states accountable. Each state's going to be held accountable for how well you're doing in providing these interpreter services. And we said to DOJ, they didn't ask us, but we talked to them, talking amongst ourselves, hold on, you can't hold the state accountable because we're not a unified court system. You've heard that a lot about Georgia's court system. We're not a unified court system. So I started opening up our constitution uh, to build, begin to make this case about how we're not a unified court system. And then our Constitution says this, all courts of the state shall comprise a unified judicial system. <laughs> I said, well, that's a problem. Because <laughs> I, I could do some legal research and interpretation and all, that's a problem. 
but in Georgia, so we, you're in a position where you actually have to explain how, notwithstanding our Constitution, how we really operate, it's not really in, in a unified way. And, it, and we really don't operate in a unified way. We're trying to do better. And then the DOJ had this, this language in their letter. Failing to take reasonable steps to ensure meaningful access for limited English proficient persons is a form of national origin discrimination prohibited by Title VI regulations. They were going to hold us all accountable. So we all reacted. And the way we reacted is we panicked. <laughs> we did an inventory and we realized that we were behind the eight ball in a lot of ways. There were areas that we needed to improve upon and it lit a fire under us. Uh, we had somewhat grown complacent knowing that we surely couldn't be expected to provide uh, in, uh, interpreter, interpreter services for Urdu, Udu, Urdu. By the way, how do you spell it? It's Udu, Urdu. Do you know what Udu is or Urdu is? One is a language. The other one is in the Urban Dictionary. The remnants of an eraser on paper. What? Google it. One is spelled with the an E, and another one spelled with the U. But I spelled it wrong the first time, so I know that. Um, but anyway, we had gotten complacent knowing that we had these challenges, and we said, well, surely we can't be expected to do better than what we are doing now. And the response was clearly, no, you, you do. So we went off to Houston, and we had a conference. And at that conference, we had folks like you from all over the state who had all received the, the, the letter and were trying to figure out how to do it, what to do about it. And that was therapeutic because we all got to vent and fuss and all that and then kind of get that out of our system. Uh, but it was also reassuring because as, as much work as we had to do here in Georgia, we were ahead of some of the other states. Uh, and there were other states that were ahead of us. But it's one of those situations where it became clear uh, where you didn't have to maybe do everything that was required, but you did have to outrun the bear. You know that story? 